Thank you very much for having me, Roger. You make it very hard for me, I see, <laughs> but excellent. So basically, uh, crypto is here to stay. I mean, I'm not going to talk much about fintech in general. I'm just going to want to put some perspective to cryptocurrencies because we are all very much in the now. But if we have a perspective, it helps us uh, to invest better and to see the future. Forget. I st oh, I hope it works. Forget. Hey, it works. The man was jumping and the jump began to swing. You should have heard the knocked out jailbird sing that rock. Everybody let the rock. Everybody in the old cell block. Who's dancing to the jail out of rock? Spider Man. All right, that's enough. <laughs> Why I show you Elvis Presley on this blockchain event? Because before our time, Elvis, when Elvis started, he was a person, devil. People didn't like him. Of course, the young people liked him, but most of them wanted to put him in prison. The same thing with cryptocurrencies. We're on the stage of Elvis, where some people love it, his music, they love cryptocurrency, but there are a lot of people, regulators, people don't understand, who don't want those changes to happen. They think, oh my God, let's hope it goes away. Let's put him away. But as we know, he became the king. And I'm certain that a lot, some of those currencies that exist now, cryptocurrencies, some that don't exist maybe, will one day be in reflection, be kings in their space. So I'm not propagating Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Ether, I don't really care. I think they're all great initiatives. Great, they're great because they help us, as he said before, helping poorer countries, people with no, uh, the same means as we have, to have financial power. I mean, look at uh, Venezuela. When I tell my wife to change insurances because it's cheaper, we live in Switzerland, she's a doctor. There's no interest in that, because if you're well off, a lot of fintech solutions are not really important at this point. But we know there are more poor people and people, misfortunate people, people like you know immigrants, um, people who have no identity that are helped with blockchain to get an identity. Or in Venezuela, I mean, those poor people, a lot, why, why is Bitcoin or digital currency so popular in these poor countries? Because it helps them escape inflation. I mean, with this, probably buy a loaf of bread. So it's a very good thing in, in countries with misfortunate situations to get out of that misery, to protect some of their wealth. Then, of course, market volatility. Of course, we haven't seen it right now, but eventually maybe digital currencies will be for a lot of people like gold. As gold was for and is still a hedge against uh, uh, difficult situations, I think digital currencies will take the same place within uh, a newer generation of people. Of course, with Trump, pro or con, but I mean, people feel, uh, feel discomfort because I mean, you don't feel as safe anymore. So too bad that Trump came now. I mean, I think if he came later, maybe even better if he never came, <laughs> digital currency would even play a bigger role to protect your assets. Now you will think, why, why hasn't cryptocurrencies been more popular with governments. And I think this, this shows why. It's about control. You know, it's like a game. Institutions are not part of it. You know, and they don't like it. You know, it's like, you know, they control the money flow. They control banking. And all of a sudden, we have cryptocurrencies, blockchain technology that basically says, hey, look, it's the people who control the money. It's not you anymore. Or we don't want you to control it as much as you do. The central banks, it's very clearly, eventually, 
they will issue their own digital currency. That's, a folk, that's, a clear, that's as clear as, you know, as, as the night is coming tonight. I mean, it's very clear. It's just obviously for good reason they want to control money. But I think it would be in their interest to also for governments to allow uh, cryptocurrencies to flourish. China, of course, China is strong because China controls everything. So the ban in China was kind of effective. But, I mean, China is a very special situation. I mean, uh, they, they control their people uh, and uh, they control a lot of things and it works for them. But it hasn't stopped cryptocurrency to, to, uh, to continue to function. Google banned in the spring, uh, I think it's this year, they banned cryptocurrency ads in, uh, in general. But in September, they reversed their opinion. And again, it's about control. It's always about control. It's just it goes everywhere. When you talk to Jamie Dimon, he's a Greek guy, actually. And, and then he reversed it, his statement, which is actually a smart thing to do if you're wrong. But I don't think he believes in what he was saying there because he's really against digital currencies. But I couldn't care less. You know, it's actually good. You have to know, I come from a hedge fund business. It's actually good if we have a lot of people who are not converted yet. Because if everyone would have been converted to cryptocurrencies, it would be too late. I mean, people, it's like then we would not be talking about this anymore. So it, it's, as long as there are doubters there which we convert, which we convert steadily, I think there's a great future in crypto. Warren Buffett, I don't know, Warren Buffett, for the people who don't know here, one of the greatest investors in the world. I mean, there's not many things, bad things you can say about this guy. You know, but I wouldn't say he's a tech guy. And you know, Genesis made this beautiful billboard, you know, which just says, hey, you've been wrong about other tech invention or tech trends. Maybe you're also wrong about this, you know? I mean, nobody knows the future, but uh, it doesn't mean he knows it. About crypto button, you know, if we look at this here, and uh, this, uh, I think, is a few days ago, uh, it would be a little worse now, or this, of course, it looks like a bubble a crash, but it's just a correction, you know, and you have to understand one thing. Let's put things again in perspective. Do you know those companies? Established companies. They all came out of the dot-com bubble. At that time, when the crash happened, none, most investors would have said, all those things will go away. They're almost like little Elvises. But they prevailed, and they're more successful than you could imagine, that they could imagine. I mean, Amazon, Bezos, when he started it, he hadn't had that vision he had now, and that execution. He just thought books would be all there would be. And the same with digital currencies, you know, even with the crash, or whatever crash we would see now, doesn't mean that one of those digital currencies one day will be the Netflix, or the Amazon, or the Google in its space. Initial coin offering or securities token, I think it's a very good thing. I mean, of course, we saw a lot of frauds. But as the market matures, this will mature as well, in terms of corporations will take that path one day to, to raise funds among their customers, among other people. And as, as the market matures and more, more big players, we're not there yet, will use this as a means of funding, it will help the whole industry as a whole. And of course, the regulators, as Roger was saying, I think, you know, we don't get around it. I mean, it's good if we work together and we start educating them. I mean, they're not stupid. But I mean, even the regulators in America, the SEC or the CFTC, Commodities Exchange, they're fighting each other over regulations. I mean, it's not like they're fighting only us. They still don't know, I mean, what's the best path. I mean, and to be fair, it's still a young industry. But I think it would be better for all of us if we find a way to, to, 
to work with regulators, and it also would be great for regulators if they would be more open to innovation, because per se, regulation stiffens innovations. You know, it's like you have a little child. You don't tell them, don't run because you're going to fall. That's part of the process, falling and failing. And then they become better at it. The same thing with, with uh, innovation in our space. You have to let things happen to a certain degree. And you know, then there are uh, interesting companies like uh, Burger King in Russia who had this Whooper coin. It's just you know, a small thing. But what stops most corporations to, to have their own currencies? You know, because they have their customers. So I mean, if it's, you know, it might, it might be using Bitcoin Cash one day or, or now, but uh, I think uh, the game is totally open. If you have the customers, the community, you can establish a coin. Smart money is coming, smart money is like those institutions. They're coming very much into the cryptocurrency space. For instance, Fidelity, one of the biggest asset managers in the world, established a change platform for hedge funds and institutions to trade cryptocurrencies. Anderson Horowitz, a private equity fund, also established a big uh, fund to trade cryptocurrency. More and more smart money going into the space because they see an opportunity. You know, as much as some people are scared because they got burned, the smart money is coming in. So that's, uh, I think, th they're not called smart money for nothing. Now, let's, another thing. I like to show this a lot. It's, uh, you see here a Fifth Avenue in the 20s. This, you can't see very clearly, but they're all horse carriages. And the only thing you see there is one motor car, a uh, regular car. And at that time, most people would have thought, oh my, crazy guy. This could have been crypto, crazy guy. A few years later, it was, the horse carriage was the only one there, and all the rest were regular cars. And that was in the 20s. Nowadays, things move much faster. So whatever we think now, okay, maybe it's never going to be really popular. I think, I mean, we're speaking here among converters, converted people. But uh, the outside people think our cryptocurrency will never really uh, uh, be very successful. But it can happen very fast, and all of a sudden, it's, it's going to be a reality for everyone. It's going to be mainstream. Of course, there's no silver bullet in investing in cryptocurrencies. I mean, if you have a huge com uh, conviction, you can invest in one. But I think from my experience as a hedge fund manager, I think diversification is key, you know. Don't bet your farm. I mean, it's just, it's just too volatile, I mean, unless you can afford it. But I, I would diversify. And we will continuously see setbacks. That's just part of, of any business, any innovation. But of course, there will be moments of victory. And I mean, the ones who, who, who believe in our space will prevail, because you only lose if you don't get up again. So I wouldn't want to finish now my short uh, presentation with uh, this slide, and uh, then I'm open for Q&A on cryptocurrency, fintech, anything you want. <laughs>
you know, that, that would make uh, cryptocurrency more successful, but I can't see now which, app, uh, which killer app will do the job. Predictions are always difficult, especially about the future. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my name is George Gansias from Hellenic Open University. Mm -hmm. uh, I think very impressive because I think digital currency improves democracy. And democracy actually is in a crisis with li liberal democracy now. It's mm -hmm. a huge crisis. And uh, uh, digital currency actually is the way out of finding the way how democracy can work in the future. I would like to ask you, uh, for instance, can go, because recently we have a lot of developments in artificial intelligence. Yes. And artificial intelligence, do you think that is going to be a threat to this digital currency? Because in the future, machines that can produce money, and this is what worries me because they can make programs and all this stuff. How can actually we be able now to think to tackle this problem which maybe comes in the future uh, with the digital currencies because all these digital currencies, they can unify it with artificial intelligence because you can control machines. This is my worry, and my concern actually. I would like to have your view about that. Uh, how can you think about the artificial intelligence and digital currency? Thank you very much. I haven't thought that way, but uh, I think, you know, of course, uh, we use already AI for cybersecurity. And uh, there talks blockchain and uh, AI as well. And uh, it's never ending. You know, you know, I think like with cybersecurity, that's a cybersecurity issue. Uh, people will, you know, it's like you can't protect yourself against cyber attacks. No one can. It's a little bit like your home. You make it more secure, so they will go to your neighbor. I don't want it that they go to my neighbor. But people attack the weakest link. So therefore, platform, uh, uh, currency, cryptocurrencies have to make themselves so um, solid that, and safe, as safe as possible, because there's no complete safety. The NSA is hacked. So an AI advances. Look at deepfake. Deepfake is like, you know, you can uh, make Obama say anything you want, and you won't be able to tell the difference already. You can a little bit, but it's getting better and better. So a lot of things will be with AI. We can't stop that. You know, even if we can't, it will affect every business we're in, every business. But there's also the big promise of blockchain because blockchain is about trust. And I envision one day, because you can fake everything so real, and almost everyone of us could do this in the afternoon, that it will have like a sign that says, hey, approved by blockchain technology that this is real. And that's, I think, the biggest prom promise of blockchain as a whole, trust. Yes, there's a question there. Yeah, I just want to quickly talk about the ICOs you talked about. Yes. Especially last year, you hear in the news about the ICOs and exit scams that were happening, and you talked about that diversification. Now, you hear still in the news about the uh, scammy ICOs and the people being busted every once in a while and a lot of investors kind of step back from that perspective because you hear about stories, people running away with 60, 80, 100 million dollars worth of an ICO and they have no, just a white paper behind them. They have no project, they have no proof, they have just a white paper associated with it. What do you think is gonna make investors more comfortable, especially going long-term, investing back into ICOs mainstream? I think the regulators play an important role there to protect us. I think security tokens will be more popular, obviously, because you get something for it. And I think the worst, I hope, the worst are behind us. I think you won't raise hundreds of millions or $10 million on a, on a white paper, on a, just a vision. Even in the real space, away from ICOs, it will be more and more difficult for smaller players to get funding anyway of ICO or regular funding, because people are much more focused on big ideas, executions. And I think if you, if you have a company that produces results and you give a securities token where basically uh, people get in return an equity stake in the company, that has a future. And the frauds, it just, it was the Wild West. Maybe we're still a bit in the Wild West, a little bit. But with new successes, we will forget the bad experiences, like in real life. Like, we all have bad dates, you know. But when you have a good date again, a nice a romance, a romantic thing, then you forget all the bad things, and then you build on this. And the same thing with ICOs. You know, there were some bad dates, but I think there will be some romantic stories ahead of us. I hope so. <laughs>
Okay, I see at least three or four more questions, but my timer is flashing there, so I'm going to have to stop you there. I think both uh, Spiros and Roger are going to be available for questions uh, during our break, so please join me in thanking both our speakers. Spiros, thank you very much. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you.